Hey modelers, Engineer Jeff here, and this tutorial we're going to paint a Reaper Bones Knoll. I've primed him with Steinal Res and put him on a Privateer Press medium size base. I think that's uh, 40 millimeter. We're going to base coat him with Mahogany from Vallejo Model Air using my Badger. Uh, it's a Patriot 105. Make several light coats, build up in layers. Get something like this. Now we're going to take Vallejo Model Air Olive Drab and we're going to brush paint the loincloth. Really like the Vallejo Model Air line and the Game Air line for that matter. Uh, because you can pretty much paint this stuff straight out of the pot without thinning a lot. Generally, I'll put a couple coats down for good coverage. And I'm going to mix a little bit of this bone white from the game airline in with the previous color, the base color. And I'm going to do some highlighting on the edges of the loincloth. Take your time and work your way around the model. And you should have something like that when you're done highlighting. So what I did was I took um, the old or the base color olive drab and I thinned it down to the consistency of a glaze and I'm going to go over the highlights that I've got right now and what that'll do is it'll basically blend everything in. And we'll do it a couple times, kind of back and forth. I won't show all of it. Um, but basically, you end up with something like this after a couple, couple waves of that. Basically, highlight it up, come back in and glaze it again. I'm going to use the US Flat Brown by Vallejo Model Air to paint the belts. I've been experimenting with glazes on the last few models that I've done and uh, I haven't quite got it down pat yet but we're getting there slowly but surely and having fun while I'm doing it I guess that's to me that's the whole point of, of painting models and uh, it's just really relaxing and it it's enjoyable and and I always want to try to improve my skill set so glazing is the next thing I'm trying to learn to do there's a lot of leather on this guy so um, just take your time and uh, pick these things out 
and you may have to do a couple coats to get good coverage but that's okay too build everything up in layers you'll also see me turning the model around like uh, it's easier for me one to paint on camera like this but then I also get um, a better view of this particular belt that I'm painting when I flip the model upside down like that. Should have something like this when you're done with the belts. I'm going to take some burnt umber and this is where I'm making that glaze. Put a drop or two in your palette and just add water until you get a nice glaze mixture. I don't really go by a formula, I go by a look. If you watch, I pull it up on the palette and watch it drain down. And I'll mix it up some more. And that's about what I'm looking for right there. And we're going to glaze the belts. And that's what the belts look like, or the leather looks like after you've glazed it. So this is Vallejo Model Air Light Brown. And we're going to paint the bandages or leg wraps, foot wraps that he's got. It'll definitely take a couple coats to get good coverage on this. I'm going to paint the wooden part of his shield as well. Depending on the tones that you want or, you know, the color of the wood, you could make this uh, a little darker brown. Um, we're going to put a wash on it afterwards. And I've just found that this color uh, produces a really nice uh, aged wood look to it after I've run a wash on it. It's going to go in and pick out some of the teeth 
same color. I ended up doing this several times in this video because I never really liked how the teeth were looking at the particular time. It's generally a back and forth process with me. And we'll go ahead and put a dot on the eyes there as well. This brush I'm using is uh, it's a Rosemary & Co. number one. And uh, I just picked up a few of those recently. First one I had wasn't that great, but the rest of them that I've been using are pretty good. We're going to use the Vallejo Model Air Steel. It's kind of my go-to color for iron. And we're going to paint the shield and any other parts that I want to have a, a you know, silverish metallic color. Go ahead and paint the shoulder armor. Or all, all the armor that he's got on this right arm of his. The plates. this male rather the mace so far so good So this is US flat brown and we're going to just paint the uppermost edges of the handle on this mace like, or is it a flail? I don't know, I'll have to look it up. This weapon of his. I'm going to go ahead and paint the toes with uh, the light brown again miss them the toenails I guess or the claws go ahead and get his hands as well fingernails too while we're at it. We use the bone white again and we're gonna go ahead and paint the stitching on his loincloth.
This is Vallejo Model Air Flat Tan. And we're going to go over the, the snout. Kind of went back and forth on this as well. Um, the under part of the chin. When I originally painted him like this, um, he kind of looked like, like an ape or a weird looking mouse. So I toned it down. I mixed a little bit of the uh, mahogany in with that tan color and then uh, it gave it a Rhenish tone. And so I'm painting like the gum line right there. This is why we're gonna end up going back over the, the teeth again. So I took the mahogany, I painted his ears, and kind of touched up around the face. And I got like that better. Now this is burnt umber, and I'm going to mix it with black. And it's basically like two drops, three drops of, or three parts of burnt umber and one part of black. It gives it a nice dark color without being the stark contrast that black gives it. And we're just going to paint his nose, his sniffer. He'll look a little like that. We'll go back over the teeth again later. This is Rucksack Tan, Privateer Press's most amazing line. And I'm going to mix it with the base coat of mahogany. And we're going to do kind of a modified dry brushing. Um, it's a nice privateer press paint that I like. I mean, that container is probably six or seven years old. No, it's probably nine years old. I got it a long time ago when they first came out. And uh, I've kind of switched to Vallejo paints, but I still use the P3 line that I've got um, for doing uh, thicker or for, you know, paints that. I need to be a little thicker uh, for dry brushing and the like. So all I'm doing here is just going in and picking out some of the details around his face without uh, messing up what I've already got. And then I'm going to start doing a kind of a pseudo dry brush, just hitting the raised areas on the fur. Sometimes I'll use the tip of the brush, sometimes I use the edge of the brush. Just kind of depends on the contours on the model. The brush isn't really heavily loaded. I get some on there and then I uh, wipe most of it off. So it's not a total dry brush, it's more of a kind of a wet and dry brush, I guess, if you will. Let's go over all the fur parts. I'm also going to paint the hands or the fingers.
Now we're going to go uh, take some pure rucksack tan and we're going to hit all the tops of the fur, uh, like the very top of the head, shoulders, some of the muscles, um, anywhere maybe sunlight would hit and you would get a little different color variation. what we got so far. This is Bright Bronze by Vallejo Game Air and it's probably my favorite color uh, of all the metallics in that particular line. Steel is probably my favorite color in the metallics of the model air. This is Mephiston Red. I decided to go ahead and paint his eyes red. So I'm one of the few people on the planet uh, that still has Devlin mud, uh, or you can use Agrax Earthshade. And we're going to do a wash on his armor. One of my local gaming shops, uh, I picked up three or four bottles of it right before they went out of business. Just, I think this is my last pot. Go ahead and get the shield as well. If you see this stuff is going to pool up and just kind of wick the excess off with your brush like I'm doing right here. I'm also going to hit his foot wraps. Going to muss them up. there to kind of make those stick out a little more. And get his the armor on his right arm and this weapon. Whatever this thing is. If somebody knows what the weapon is, leave the comment in the comments field down below. Please. And 
after it dries, this is what we get. This is Brown Liner by Reaper Miniatures. And what I'm gonna do is, I've started using this stuff to do um, basically lining uh, places where that I want to really kind of pop out. And so we're gonna go along the belt, um, any of the leather, uh, any places that I think, you know what, a harsh shadow there would really cause some good contrast, something that I want to see. And so um, the bandages or the, the foot wraps, anything, you can, you can watch it as I put this stuff down. Sometimes a wash just um, tones things down too much and you want to, you know, put like a, like a really sharp shadow someplace and this stuff is perfect for it. Using it to kind of define the area between the leg, the back of the leg and the tail here. Right along the, the loincloth and where the fur intersect. I'm going to go back and do the teeth. This is the light brown. Of course the weapon's hiding everything. Can't shoot the video perfect every time. But we'll try. Once that dries, we'll take some ogren wash or ogren flesh wash and uh, I'm just take a little bit of it, go in there in between the teeth now that we can see them better. And then we'll come back in with bone white and just hit the edges of the teeth and get them to stick out a little better. Nice and shiny chompers. So that's it for this video. Here's some pics. Uh, if you like this video, give a thumbs up. Leave comments in the comments field down below. And of course, subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.